Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about my favorite speculation. The price on this card has continued to drop, but I like it right now. Chandra Torch of Defiance from Kaladas. Currently sees around $20 on TCG Player. You can get copies for her at $17. eBay is currently selling her at $18, $19. You might feel like that's very high for a card. I typically stay away from Planeswalkers that are over $10, mainly because they have a long way to fall. However, after doing more research on this card and seeing that it does have legacy and even vintage play, and should the meta change, she has upside. Now, what is the maximal upside of this card? It probably is Liliana of the Last Hope, which is a $35 card. So I can see this getting there, but it's going to need some help. But I also see it being a viable long-term hold, which I like a lot because it's hard to move cards. So therefore, there's many things I like about it. The number one reason I would say it's interesting to me today when it wasn't interesting yesterday, I was looking at Nicol Bolas and going over the ways that you can play him early. Now, A for Work Marvel is obviously the way to do it. Or, but outside that, in his colors, which is blue, black, and red, what can really help him get there? And the answer is Chandra. Chandra, on turn five, if you drop your land and she's still alive and she has four loyalty and then even pseudo removal, you can drop your Nicol Bolas on turn 5, which I feel like will win the game. And looking at her price graph, a lot of things tell me that she is a very good speculation, such as the number of decks she is being played in. She's played pretty much in every vehicles deck. Hit or miss in A for Work Marvel, which is the best deck. Green Energy, I'm not really sure what that is. Scape Shift, eh, that's meh. And Sun and Moon in Modern. It's pretty good in Sun and Moon. Legacy, Dragon Stompy. This is an interesting one. Vintage, Gus Mentor. And Rogue. Well, I guess that's just a Rogue deck in standard. Modern, she has Jun as well as Through the Breach. I like the variety. I like the fact that it's in multiple formats, including Eternal formats. And I like the fact that it's multiple decks in each of these formats. And most importantly, see, it's already seeing play in A for Work Marvel. Should A for Work Marvel be the number one deck still, then it's viable. But should the meta change and we move away from A for Work Marvel into a Chandra based deck, yes, that will be very good for her. So, what is the upside or is there upside in a $20 standard Planeswalker? It took me a long time to figure out if I should make a video like this because $20 is a very, very high price for a standard card. And typically $20 cards are not gonna do well. But there's so many other components, there's so many elements that I look at and I say, huh, Okay, her all-time low was $19.40. So she pretty much is bottoming out. She's never hit below 19. Now, when you look at the TCG player, it's 17. Look at the card kingdom, it's 25. You look at the European card market, it's about 18. I guess Amazon does not have one. The all-time high was when she pretty much pre-released, which this is the truth for every planeswalker. She pre released at $58. $58 was the original price on this card if you pre ordered her, which you should not have done because pros write articles telling you to buy cards because they need to sell cards to make money to get the commission to tell you to write to for writing articles. Hmm. But I've always liked her independent of what other people have said. I've always liked her, but like all the Planeswalkers who start at $58, I know it's not gonna be sustained. But to see her at 20, I always felt that she would be a good buy at 20, 
are 15, but she's never really hit 15. So on eBay, you can buy her for 18, buy now, free shipping. TCG Play, I think it's 17, but you have to pay for shipping. It's like 99 cents. So $18. Let's assume that the market price of this card is $18, especially if you can buy four. I'm sure someone will sell it to you for $18 a piece when you buy a playset. Free shipping. One, oh, you can also get eBay discounts. There's always so many eBay discounts, right? So there is ways to reduce the cost of this card in addition to it be already being at the $18, $20 mark. You can probably get a $15 if you use eBay discount. Overall, I love this card. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I think this card is going to be valuable long term. Everything in my gut tells me like it's good. I've seen a lot of magic cards come and go. I know a lot about power level. That might be a new concept to a lot of you. A lot of you are like, oh, Amake is super powerful. It's meta changing, you know, for modern or legacy. And that's like, uh, okay. You know, I've seen enough. So when people said Harsh Mentor was going to change like legacy and modern, I've seen something that I thought was going to change it. And it was like, Zealot asked Zealot was a card that everyone said the exact same thing about. And in many ways, it's slightly better in my opinion, but people argue it's not because they're really hyped on Alma Cat right now and they don't forgot they forgot about Ask Zealot when it first came out. So when I look at a card, I compare it to things I've seen in the past. And Harsh Mentor, in my opinion, does not compare well to Edulon of the Great Revel, which is the two drop that you really want to play in that type of deck. So overall, I do like Chandra. I think four, she does, she's not Jace, and she doesn't have to be Jace. But in standard CS upside with Nico Boles, I do feel like people will want to play Chandra into Nico Boles. That's a reasonable curve, in my opinion. That's something that people people are going to want to play Nicol Bullis. Like, people want to play Ugin. They pushed it, so you could play it. Hopefully, they don't ban it like Emiko, but who knows. Overall, I'm very, very happy with the price drop. I guess price discount. If anything, just having a place out of her is very valuable should you want to play multiple decks in these formats. As you can see, she is extremely popular in... Even in Legacy, she's not she's seeing some play, right? I like it. She's not typical in terms of her power level. When I first saw her, I said, okay, this card is way overhyped. It's never going to get there. And that's the same thing I said about Liliana. And Liliana, the last hope, is a very good card. Do I like her at $35? No, I really do not. But I feel like Chandra, in the right meta for standard, could get up to $35 as well. Maybe break $30 would be great. And that is a big saving if you buy her for $18, right? And from $18, she goes to $30, you make $12 on a card, $4 times four, $48, $50 a playset, quotations, retail value. Now, if you tried to sell it and flip a profit, not going to work very well even assuming she hits her at $30 or even $35. But if you just wanted a copy to play, I feel like she can get up to Liliana value should the meta want her to. And at the end of the day, it's not one of those cards that is completely dead where it rotates out and no one, it doesn't see, it doesn't see any play, right? It's, she's already seeing play. The one thing I find surprising is a lot of people don't get it if the card does not see play in standard, it likely won't see play in modern unless there is a combo or an interaction that is not currently in standard. Standard is all about power level, right? That's why when we had better mana bases, everyone played five color good stuff or four color good stuff. They just played Jace Prodigy and they played all the good cards in every single good color because that's what standard is about. Now, when your mana base isn't so good, you have to kind of pick and choose what colors you want to be. You can't be four colors or five colors, good stuff, which because you don't have fetch lands anymore, or shock lands, or any really viable lands that will allow you to do that. But overall, I think she's very powerful. 
from my personal experience, I don't see the downside at 20, right? Maybe she dips a little lower to 15 or I don't think she's going to get to 10 ever during rotation, but standard, I mean, standard, she does not rotate out with the ally Gideon ally of Zendikar set. The battle for Zendikar as well as Oath of the Gatewatch will rotate out. She will still be here. So she still has some time to rise and even during rotation, she will have value. It's not going to be like, oop, all the value is gone. No, nope, she's already seen considerable play in Legacy and even more play in Modern. So anyway, bye guys.